Here we are, another rainy morning here in Wisconsin. We are getting ready to have our semi-trailer mobilized over to the next project, which is about a half an hour away. We're kissing this project goodbye for one last time here, picking up a few little odds and ends that we had. Moving on to the next project. We're just finishing up some of the demo inside the building as we speak right now. A couple more weeks and this whole thing will be down. Today we're getting mobilized to a primary jaw crusher. It needs a maintenance paint job on it. It's built about four years ago. It's rusting through, coating at a few different areas. We need a fresh coat of paint on it, so we are heading there right now. Semi's a couple minutes behind us, so we'll see you when you get there. That water tower that you just saw in the video there won the best paint job for the best water tower in the nation a few years ago from Tenemic. Wauwatosa Water Tower. Got the trailer dropped off. Very important under this project, we're under M-Shaw rules, so we have to make sure that the wheels are chalked on the trailer. Jump inside here right now and see how good of a job the driver did to see how much stuff uh, fell out of the cabinets. The magnets, these are the ones that they lock. Once this door is locked, all these are locked then. So, we love our magnets. This is everything we gotta get taken out of here. A lot of junk, a lot of things to organize. We'll be back here tomorrow, get everything cleaned up. God bless the USA. Ben Keel calling. Pulling on site here today and wanted to coordinate with you um, some of our work scheduled this next week here for the repainting. I have my semi dropped off here right now today as we speak. There is a water truck that I'm gonna park it right next to. Getting ready to leave the plant as we speak right now. This is where we're gonna be starting work here this next week, Wednesday, for approximately two weeks. Now the goal is to get this done by June 1st. However, with the weather, coming up here this spring. It might not be a full possibility to have it completed by June 1st, but what we will do is we will complete the areas where we don't have to redo our work twice. We'll get all the pressure washing done, start painting, we'll get as much painting in as we possibly can, and uh, leave the easier stuff till the end. shortly and take a look at how it looks. It's been almost a decade, 10 years since we painted it. Probably haven't been back there to get my eyes on it in at least five years. Well, that plant is kind of a funny story. It had to get done by the end of the year. Temperatures were dropping and falling very, very fast. The customer didn't care. They said it just needs to get washed and painted. It doesn't matter. It lasts for a year or two years, but that's what's got to happen. We used Resilience Low Temperature House Paint. True latex acrylic house paint. Highly recommended against it. I wasn't comfortable in it however like about three four years ago when i went back there it still looked great yeah it faded out a little bit but there was no adhesion issue or it had failed anywhere really really good trick of the trade i guess if in a bind you need something that goes down to low temp down to 32 degrees that's what we used obviously not solvent born it was acrylic held up well Taking a look at what Chooch got done yesterday. You can see he was sanding down any of the rough spots or any of the spots that were a little bit of stain was left from when we stripped it the first time. We have just a little bit of minor sanding to finish up along this bottom edge down there where there's still a little bit of stain left. And today we'll be applying the brightener, the Woolman product, mixing it up, spraying it on with the battery powered garden sprayers, letting it dwell, and then rinsing it off. Come around to the front of the house, the dormers we stripped yesterday. Take a look at that. That's great. I'd say 98% of all the stain came off. A couple of little areas to the left of the window, the vertical beam that goes up and down. You can see there's a little bit there that left didn't come off real well, as well as this far side. So that will sand those little spots off and then we'll get ready to brighten everything up. So here we are getting ready to apply the uh, Woolman deck and fence brightener. This is pretty simple. This is just a simple concentrate. Blue Magic makes five gallons. A little bit of crystals in there. You can hear them in the can a little bit. I like to shake these up to start out as much as you can. And this is an absolute must. Thoroughly stir it. Paint mixers in reverse do not work as well as in forward. Reverse no, 
forward yet. You don't want to go too crazy with this stuff. It will eventually start to foam, but what we see is if you get a close-up inside, there's some solids. You can actually hear it touching. Okay, so there's little crystals. We want to dissolve those crystals in the water. If you don't mix this up well enough, the crystals will clog up your garden sprayer. So we're also going to take one more precaution just to make sure that the garden sprayer doesn't get clogged. The garden sprayers do come with a filter, or the holes in this filter are bigger than the holes in the nozzle. Can still technically something can get through here to clog up your sprayer. So here's how we're going to stop that. We're going to use a very fine mesh five gallon paint bucket filter. Put it in our top when we pour our product in. Filter out. As we can see, there was a few little blue little chunks that weren't fully mixed in. This will guarantee that every time that we do pour it in, that's going to stay clean. Another thing that I'm doing here is I'm only I only filled it up halfway or three quarters of the way because I'm going to be going up on a ladder and I don't have the backpack set up on this because most of the work on this job has been done from a lift or from the ground. I'm only going to fill it up halfway here the first time and not as heavy to carry out. Here I know we cleaned it up with water the last time. Let's flush that pump out a little bit. Off we go. So whenever we're working on a ladder we always want to make sure that we trigger the gun down, not up. When it's up, it has a tendency to want to push us off the ladder. Point it down, your arm absorbs that. Earlier in the video, we showed you putting this filter inside here. It's kind of brain farted. It's put the normal filter in there and then put this filter in there. Then the filter can't fall in. What this deck bread is, is it's a gel that mixes with the water that really attaches to the surface really well and allows it to dwell on it do its work. It's not like TSP and bleach, which would dry out really quick. This is the last time that we'll be pressure washing the end of the job here. So we want to make sure that anything that's along the roof, anything, any fibers that are left or anything as you can see down here are taken care of, rinsed off. Gutters are rinsed out real well. Faces of the gutters are mixed out real well. You can see the gutters are already scratched up. We already sanded these down in preparation for priming and painting. Match the new gutter color. Another thing that we can do is a moisture test on our wood. So we know that we pressure washed yesterday. What we'll do with our moisture meter is we'll just see where we're at after one day. So we're at 16% there, 15% there. Make sure our meter works. This is really wet because we just washed on the other side. Over the limit, OL, OL, over limit. Obviously because it's soaking wet. If I come back to here, we got 40%, but that could still be some of the moisture that was left on my pins. So I'd usually do a few little ones, 33, 32, 24. So we're at 15 and 14% over here, 16%. 17%, 14%. By Saturday, we'll be able to stain this. Today, we're gonna be doing the brightening. It's Thursday, it's gonna be 75 and sunny with a 15 mile an hour wind tomorrow, so that should dry everything out. We know that we washed this at the end of the day yesterday. It was a windy day, but it was the end of the day, and then it rained, so the humidity came in. This had not very good drying conditions, and we already know we're pretty darn close to where we could apply a waterborne stain. But however, since today, we're gonna have this washed here by noon, one o'clock, have the rest of today. They're not calling for any more rain. Tomorrow, sunny 72, 15 mile an hour wind. Get this all dried out so on Saturday when we can come in, we can apply the first and hopefully the second coat of stain back to back, this ash coat. We're gonna apply the Woolman Deck Right stain. I switched out the tip, as you could see, from a round conical adjustable tip to just a simple fan spray pattern. It allows me to know that I'm getting the uh, deck strip around in a very consistent and even manner. Start at the bottom and we work our way up. We totally saturate the surface. One five gallon pail will cover approximately 750 square feet. And remember that is a concentrate. One gallon of concentrate. As I go over it once with a pretty good pattern, it's not fully soaked in. So I definitely wanna make sure that I go over that again and get it totally soaking wet. We want it running off the surface. You can't put too much of this on. Start back at the top and give it another nice flood coat. Does not affect windows or cladding. It is safe for metals. What happens if I don't put enough of this on? If you don't put enough of this on, you'll see light and dark marks. If you let it dry in the sun, it will leave streak marks and you will have to reapply. So another thing, as I mentioned, the last time that we're gonna be pressure washing is gonna be here shortly when we rinse this off. So up top here on the soffit, you can see a lot of the wood fibers are still in there. I'm gonna lightly wash those out just to make sure that that's the last time that I have to touch that soffit. The deck bright has a 10 minute dwell time. After 10 minutes, We'll get the pressure washer going on it. Switch down on tip sizes from a wider fan with that was what we used to strip with 
to a narrower fan. It's gonna allow me to rinse a little bit faster, a little bit more angle control of my water so I can exactly see when I'm rinsing off. I also turned the water temperature down to about 120 degrees. Really not necessary for hot water for the rinsing of this product. It can be rinsed with cold water too as well. Not recommended with a garden hose. I've never personally tried it, but I've used enough garden hoses to know that you'd really have to get a lot of water on there. We are using just a little bit of pressure with the pressure washer to make sure we're getting this brightener out of all these wood fibers. Today's really a perfect day for applying this product. The trees, there's absolutely no wind, overcast, cloudy at about 55 degrees, which it's really allowing the product to dwell on the surface and not dry out. The longer it sits on there, the brighter it can potentially get. So after that first gallon, the last part of it here, we can kind of see what was left inside there, little crystals. So this was not dissolved. It's almost like little ice cubes. They don't hurt you or anything, but you can kind of bend and squash them between your fingers. So make sure that it's really, really stirred well. It must have been maybe one left over from last year. So we wanna make sure that that's out of it. So here what I like to explain is before we get into the brightening process, we have some discoloration of the wood here. That's just from ice, water coming down the side. The gutters were plugged up down here. We already have that taken care of, but this bleeding and little staining areas, you probably wouldn't even see it when we go to stain over it, but we are gonna put the wood brightener on it first. Scrub on it a little bit in there, get in there a little bit, and then brighten the whole thing. So here we are, we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna work our way up. We're gonna pick a log that's more than likely at, at the top of this corner of the beam of the house here that's gonna come across. We can do it section by section at a time. It allows us to make sure that the product dwells for long enough, the minimum of the 10 minutes, allows the product not to dry out, we don't wanna to get too far ahead of ourselves, and allows us to move methodically one at a time. We don't wanna start at the top and move our way down. If we did that, it's gonna streak. The whole side's gonna streak. Because the brightener is gonna be soaking down onto the wood that hasn't had brightener applied yet, those streaks will be left, so we don't want that. Here we're gonna just spray just this area right here, like I mentioned before. We're just gonna get a little scrub. So as we continue to spray, we're gonna do a close-up of the wood, so you can actually see that the wood is soaking up every bit of it. If I go real fast like this, you can see dry spots, dry spots. So one section at a time, let the sprayer do the work. It's all about flow. What I found is that if you do two coats on it back and forth, it tends to wet the surface better. Where if I just go real slow like this one time, you'd seem to waste a little bit more material. So this wood has weathered. Last fall, we got froze out. Too cold to get the work done. So this wood has sat all winter long, since last November, up until the middle of uh, May here right now. It has mill glaze on it, and it has turned gray streak some gray up on top only the top log because that's where the sun hits usually not the bottom so I'm gonna pick right to the top of this gutter to where I'll stop I used to apply this with an airless paint sprayer to speed up the process but in reality battery powered sprayers work much much better less atomization don't inhale these fumes the railings have also sat since last winter we want to remember that we only apply in as much product as we know that we can rinse off in 10 minutes. I know that since I'm getting up inside this porch here that I'm gonna get all this wood that I'm currently spraying wet as well. I'm just gonna do this little area here all the way down. And we wanna apply this to dry wood. It'll work better if it's applied to dry wood unless it's sunny outside. If it's sunny outside and it's gonna dry, then they recommend you dampen it. I might get done spraying, get ready to fire up the pressure washer, start rinsing. You know, days like this, since it's no wind, no sun, overcast. It's got done raining. It's a perfect day because this stuff is not drying out at all. Before I first started, if we would have done that in the direct sunlight, might have had to go back if we waited longer than that 10 minutes, spray one more quick mist coat on it, keep everything activated real nice. Another big important thing to realize is that since last year we didn't get this quite finished up, I don't want to intentionally try to get this spray over onto the other side of the house. So what I did is I wet it down the other side of those logs. I take extra special attention. Anything that ran over to the side, I'm gonna rinse that off here shortly. As we start back up, we don't want to get the wood that we have not put the brightener on it yet wet. So if I go and start trying to rinse off that top log at this angle, I'm gonna get all the water up top and those logs are gonna be wet. So then when I probably brightener to them, it's not gonna soak in as much. I'm gonna get up on it, I'm gonna wash down, everything down as much as I can. 
to mention. We've got our hot water pressure washer going today, our hot box. This takes a couple minutes for the water to start getting warm, okay? So always make sure that you remember that when you're washing that. It's not hot water always to start. Cleaning consistently, I'm just gonna wash the first board for a little bit, overwash it till water heats up and then move on. See on the house, we're actually taking off a little bit of those wood fibers. This brightener is loosening it up just a little bit, enough to where as long as our tip is the same distance away all the time, we'll get an even consistent result. If we're not, remember access. If you can't touch every bit of it at that right correct angle that you need with that tip, you gotta move. The next part of the area will have to be up in the boom lift so we can make sure that everything's perfect. Here's a prime example. As we can see right here, when I was on this other side, I washed this far over. And as we can see, these are the lines. So that's the new wood, and that's still some of the old mill glaze wood. See, I can actually move it with my finger, remove it. See that? The mill glaze is what we're making sure we're taking off right now. This is a must. You must do this. With the brightener, perform this process with the correct tip so you can make sure that all that mill glaze is gone so the stain will penetrate in evenly. Another great example here, as you can see. I rub my finger, there's nothing coming off. I rub my finger up here, and that's all mill glaze that has to come off. This isn't as easy as just simply just rinsing it down. You need to make sure, as you can see in the videos, that you're the same consistent distance apart. So there we got our section cleaned, our lower section. You can see everything up top stayed dry. So now we're gonna go up top and we're gonna make three more moves. We're gonna make this into three different areas. We'll do straight above me next. Apply the brightener. We'll move over to the other side. We'll apply the brightener there too as well. And then what we'll do is we'll rinse everything down at the very end. Again, it's not drying today, perfect conditions. We're gonna do this full section with the brightener too as well. Up and over, come right straight down going to take a little bit more moving once we start washing. Right now it's easier to put the brightener on because I just have to make sure the wood's wet. I don't actually have to cut any of that wood off, the mill glazing off with the wand. This is going to go about three times or four times as fast as the actual washing and rinsing itself. As I'm applying the brightener here, as you can see right here on the side, that's what we want to watch out for, or any streaks that could possibly dry like that. So if the sun was out and the bottom started to dry out on us, these streaks could be left there after you get done and then you have to do the whole thing over again, or at least that whole area again, re-brighten it, reapply it, rinse it off again. Here, as I mentioned up top, we have our brightener applied from this log up. So I don't want that brightener to run down onto the stuff that we've already brightened and leave streak marks, so I'm just making sure. Now, if this was a hot, sunny day, we would have wanted to have somebody down here with the pressure washer turned on as often as needed so it didn't dry out, just keeping them wet. So this has been brightened and washed. You can see all the mill glaze that's white up there right now. You can just absolutely see the difference. Brightener's doing its work, softening up that mill glaze, and then we're rinsing it off. <laughs> pressure washing from a basket tip of the day. I'm trying to fight your line all the time. I want to make sure that I can pull out enough line. I don't have to fight it, especially at these rougher angles. So I usually give myself about six feet. Got to have a clamp. Clamp around it. Now we're good to go. we're getting ready to apply the deck bright to the deck we stripped this last year and there's obviously going to be mill glaze on it again this year so we're going to put a heavy flood coat on the deck let it sit for about 15 minutes and rinse her off just a full flood coat make sure every square inch is covered i don't worry about getting it on the bottoms of the railings or anything down here that sash coat is just tenacious never had an issue with it streaking or anything of the sort
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our page. As we all know, surface prep's the most important thing. Doing it the right way the first time, especially when we're applying a one-time stain on this house. It'll never be stained again. It'll only be clear-coated with the Sashco system. We want to make sure that everything is perfect. Access is most important. Attention to detail is important. Keeping that pressure washer nozzle that exact distance away from it on every single square inch is going to be the you know the difference from an okay job to an absolutely perfect job. Stay tuned. we got a couple days here of dry time now. Content will be low enough and we will be able to start our stain process and hopefully get two coats of the Sashco. Stay safe.